Hey, good evening. Thanks for being here, you guys, everybody. We're glad you came out. I know we're certainly glad you guys made the trip, uh, kind of stopping on the way back home, and classes tomorrow, and a lot of stuff in front of you, but we're, we're grateful that you, you made a point to be with us tonight. We pray that God blesses you and our time together. So why don't we bow, um, and let's, uh, let's just pray, get this night over to God. Father God, we just, we love you, and we're grateful for your grace and for your mercy. We're grateful for opportunities such as this, where we get to gather, God, and be encouraged um, by your word and your word and song. We pray your blessings on Loki as they uh, as they share and as they minister uh, tonight. We pray that our hearts are just open and receptive to what you want to speak to us. And God, that we do more than just be hearers, that we are doers of, of the word. And we're doers of what you push us and move us and direct us and guide us and invite us into. Lord, I'm grateful for these young men and their, their willingness to be used of you and used by you uh, to minister in such a way. We pray tonight would be just a wonderful night uh, celebrating together as family. And so, God, we just we give you this evening. We pray for your blessings, and we pray that everything that happens tonight will lift up your son and draw our attention to him. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys, welcome to the stage, Low Key. University, and as in we are students there, uh, but an interesting fact about our group is that we're not actually um, a sent out Maranatha group. The uh, Maranatha sent out a lot of groups to do promotional stuff for them, um, to get the word out about Maranatha and to promote the school, um, but our focus is actually a little bit different, hence the reason why we're an independent group. Uh, as we were getting together and coming up with a, a, a mission for this year, we really landed on um, our mission for this year is to um, go out and encourage churches, encourage them in their ministry that they're already doing. Um, and so for instance, tonight we're not taking over um, Pastor Sonny's ministry, but we're coming alongside and helping as best we can. So if we can encourage you through music, we're gonna do that. Um, and if we can encourage you through the sharing of God's word a little bit later than we can do, then we will do that. Um, and so that's really our mission for this year. Uh, we're going to go around and do some introductions so you guys know who's on your stage, who's singing. Um, and we'll give a couple of inter or an interesting fact about each one of us so that you guys know a little bit more about us. My name is Tyler Juvenal. I am from Wausau, Wisconsin, so I'm kind of in my home, home area here a little bit, uh, just, a, just a couple hours away. And I'm studying biblical studies at Maranatha. I'm a senior. And an interesting fact about myself, oh boy. 
<laughs> There's too many. Well, maybe maybe they're not interesting, but they're facts. Uh, I'm just gonna go with a classic one. I'm getting married on June 6th. All right. <laughs> My name is Josiah Knight. I'm from Marysville, Ohio, and I'm studying humanities and missions at Maranatha. Uh, I wanna when I graduate, I wanna be involved in church planting on the mission field if the Lord uh, is uh, move, leading that way. And uh, interesting fact about me is that one of my favorite foods of all time is sushi. <laughs> my name is Jeffrey Pelletier. I'm from South Bend, Indiana, and I am a sophomore biblical studies major. And an interesting fact about me is that a few years ago when I went on a mission trip to Peru, one of the most amazing foods I had was cow heart. <laughs> <laughs> From Milwaukee, Wisconsin, my name is Samuel Folkman. I am a junior music education major. And an interesting fact about me is a couple of years back, I had the pleasure of performing with the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra. My name is Jamin Beachel. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. I am a freshman physical ed and health major. Um, interesting fact about me is in order to be, and then we, get, we have an initiation for our family, and it, our initiation is you have to eat a fish eye. <laughs> well, I'm all the way from the happiest place on earth, that is Orlando, Florida. <laughs> My name is Caleb Letzring, and I am a senior pastoral studies major. Lord willing, I will be graduating this spring. And, um, yeah, Lord willing. <laughs> and my, but my plan is to go into some form of full-time counseling eventually. And um, an interesting fact about me is despite having lived in Orlando up for the first 18 years of my life, I have been in hospitals in three different states. Oh. Admitted into hospitals. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Micah Gillespie. I'm from Georgetown, Texas. I'm studying piano pedagogy and church music. Fun fact about me, well, it's kind of a depressing fact actually, I have never <laughs> ever had a pillow fight. Oh. <laughs> So we actually, we actually change those up um, every time we're up here, so we usually actually don't communicate what we're doing, so these interesting facts are new to us. <laughs> Except for mine. <laughs> so the first song that we sang for you was entitled Creator, Redeemer, and King. The next two songs we're going to sing for you, um, they, go, they go hand in hand, and they tell the story of when that Creator, Redeemer, and King came and died for us. Um, the first piece that we will sing for you is entitled The Way of the Cross. And it talks about how the weight that Jesus was bearing, it wasn't, it wasn't the weight of the tree that he was carrying on his back, but it was the weight of our sin. Um, it talks about how our, our sin and disgrace Jesus bore in our place. The second song we're singing is entitled, It's Still a Cross. And um, it talks about how it's still that cross and it's still that blood that saves us and redeems us today. Um, and the chorus, I love the words, it says, It's still a, still a cross, it's still the blood. It's still his dying act of love, compelling me to spend my life in giving everything for Christ. And as we sing this song for you, I just encourage you to think about what you're spending your life on. Are you spending your life on the material things of this world, the things that aren't going to last? Or are you spending your life for Christ? The way to the cross, and it's still a cross. <laughs> Oh, wait. 
one cheered and cursed his name, the object of their scorn. He never spoke a word to them, the silent Lamb of God. This man of sorrow bore the cross, he chose to carry
song we're going to sing tonight closely ties in with the last two songs that we sang. The song is entitled Jesus Saves, and it just really um, talks about that excitement when you first get saved and how exciting it is today to think about what God has done for you. Jesus Saves. <laughs> Love 
when the prince of life for us shed for us his precious blood, who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise, he can never be forgotten. It's right up here at the front um, to help, if that's all right. And we'll, um, oh, I, I, I'm just looking forward to the afternoon, to be quite honest with you. It's <laughs> so beautiful play. So why don't we bow and let's just ask God to, uh, not only to uh, encourage our hearts towards generosity, but we're going to certainly trust that he's going to use this in great ways uh, for Loki. Father God, we just again come before you. We're so grateful. Um, God, for your love. Um, we've been reminded tonight of just the distance that you you to reach us um, and you did so willingly knowing um, the joy that was set for your son that he was willing to come and to step into our world to give us an opportunity to have a relationship with a God that loves us that much and God we just pray tonight as we're encouraged by that that our hearts would be encouraged toward generosity that as we were reminded that God you, you loved the world so much you gave and that's always that's always kind of the mark of our love is, is how we reciprocate, how what that does to us and does in us. God, help us tonight um, to be givers, to be generous, to be glad that we have a God that we can come together tonight to celebrate, <coughs> to hear about, to sing about, and to be encouraged in. God, we just pray that you would bless this offering um, and, and further this ministry. Um, what, a, what a valuable and, and wonderful <coughs> ministry it is to come alongside other Christians, other churches, and just encourage them in the directions that you're leading and the path that you're, uh, you're laying out for us. God, again, we thank you. We praise you in Christ's name. Amen.
So I hope you don't mind if I use my phone really quickly <laughs> to read uh, a verse from that hymn that Micah just played. It says, Though like the wanderer, the sun gone down, darkness be over me, my rest is stone, yet in my dreams I'll be nearer my God to thee. And I think if, um, if you've been around long enough, you know how hard it is to trust that you can be near to God and just trust God for who he is. And that's kind of what this next song talks about. It was written by evangelist Andy Gleiser. I don't know if you know who that is, but he writes wonderful, wonderful song texts that are really rich in theology. And this time, he brought a bunch of promises that we see in the Bible and put them to a song. And he wrote it from the perspective of God <coughs> speaking to his child, to his loved one, to his Christian, and commanding him to trust him. And I was talking with Pastor earlier. This song is special to me because they sang this at camp. Um, when I was given the privilege of being a counselor at the Wilds this past summer. And it was often about the middle of the week that I wanted to pull my hair out and sometimes the kids' hairs out and, every, and the hair out of anybody else around me. And, and I would just begin to doubt God. Really, that's, that's what my anger and my, my frustrations would come out as. I wasn't trusting that God had me there. And then they would sing this song and they would just ask, do you trust me? That's, that's, and I would just hear the Holy Spirit convicting me. So this is trust me, and I hope that no matter what you're going through, whether it, it seems incredibly complicated or it seems like nobody understands, God does, and he's just asking you to trust him. This is trust me. I give us all your soul, since 
everlasting strength is mine. Fully trust me, wearied one. Trust me, wearied one. Trust me. Trust me. Personally, this is my favorite song. Um, I think God um, speaks directly, or at least my, my, my heart is sensitive to um, the truth that's coming out in this song. It comes from a passage in Matthew where Jesus takes his disciples aside and asks them a couple of questions. He says, who do people say that I am? And obviously, Jesus is the Son of God. He knows what the answer is. He knows who people are saying that he is. But he still asks his disciples because he has a deeper point he wants to convey to them. And the disciples answer, they say, some people say that you're John the Baptist, or on the other hand, some people say that you're Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Um, but Jesus stops them and says, but who do you say that I am? And that's the point he was getting at, is who am I, actually? And Peter pipes up, and a lot of times we give Peter flack because he puts his foot in his mouth so much. <laughs> but really, we're in that same position every day. I know that I can speak for myself. Um, but if Peter gets one thing right in his life, he gets this next phrase right. He says, Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And in that short phrase is packed so much promise and truth. Within that phrase is, is the fact that Jesus is God. He is the son of God. And so he takes those characteristics that God has and in some ways <coughs> amplifies them. He is God. But what's really amazing about that fact is that that fact was true 2,000 years ago, and it's still true today. Whether or not the world sees it, whether or not we see it, Jesus is the Christ. He's the Son of the living God. We can't change the truth. And so let this, let this song um, encourage you in the fact that your Savior is God. Your Savior is the Son of God. And because of what he went through for us, we can, we can be saved and we can be reconciled with God the Father.
triumphantly prevailing over hell. You broke sin's curse by rising from the dead, parading captives forth in victory. You freed my soul and crushed the serpent's trial, whether it be a sin that you're unwilling to give up for Christ. And then we just think about God for a minute. Think of his power. Think of his majesty. And then the music starts. That's what this song is. And it's just a reminder that only God can move a mountain. Only God can calm the sea. God is truly the one that we can depend on because he's the one with all the power. We truly have none. This is only God. Oh, God. 
theme of the cross and Christ dying for our sins. Um, the next song we'll be singing is Consider Him. I'm going to read you the chorus. It says, Consider Him who chose a lonely cross. Consider Him and marvel at His loss. Despising the shame, Christ suffered in your place. Consider Him. Sufficient is His grace. I just want to challenge you today. Do you consider Him? Because we should be. We should be considering Christ every day of our lives. We should consider what he did for us on that cross. We should never forget that. So I hope that as we sing this song that you will consider him. And that you will every day of your life consider him. Because Christ's grace is sufficient. This is consider him. Considering what Christ did for us and dying on that cross, we know he didn't stay there. He was taken down, he was put in a tomb, but he didn't stay in that tomb either. Three days later, he rose again. And because of Christ's resurrection, we can be victorious as Christians. 1 Corinthians 15 talks all about that. If it wasn't for Christ's resurrection, all of our faith would be in vain. But he did rise again. And because of that, we are victorious and we can rejoice. And um, one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The next song that we're singing for you is entitled, The One Who Lives Again. And it goes through four different aspects of the resurrection. What it means for this world, for us as Christians, and uh, what change it should have in our lives. So I, I pray that as we are um, singing this song, you would think about it. Think about what the resurrection means for you. And then think about the fact that you too are resurrected if you are a Christian. 
Uh, every, every man that believes in Christ is becoming a, a, a new creature. And you, your old things are passed away and all things are become new. Uh, think about that as we sing the next song, The One Who Lives Again. <clears throat> and breaks the bread of work, uh, the word of life really quickly. I'd like you to think back to an earlier song that we sang, You Are the Christ. There's something very definite, very certain about that. That's, that statement says that whether the world believes it or not, whether we believe it or not, <clears throat> Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah. And that we can have salvation in him if we only believe. And this next song that I would like to sing for you is to, handles the other side talks about the relationship that we can have with Jesus Christ and that we can know of a certainty that he is ours. This is I know you are mine. Savior, I know you are mine. 
Well, I want to thank you all once again for coming out tonight. I know it was a sacrifice. Uh, there's a game on I hear. I'm not sure what that's about, but <laughs> because of that, I will try to keep this message down to a minimum. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to be looking at verses 8 through 11 uh, tonight. I don't know what Bible version you use, but I'm going to be reading out of uh, King James Version, and uh, that that's, well, it might sound a little different if it's not what you're using. But it says, uh, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful <coughs> saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. I'm going to ask a question here. How many of you have ever gone driving in Chicago before? Okay, yeah. I had the opportunity to drive home from uh, Maranatha, which is in southern Wisconsin, to Ohio, where I live, uh, not too long ago to go home for um, Thanksgiving break. And... Uh, I, I try to pack as many people into my minivan as I can so that they can pay for the gas and I can get home for free. And so <laughs> I, I, I can fit eight people total, uh, seven passengers, into my van. Uh, and so I, I got six people down and they were all, all signed up. They were going to pay and then one person was left. And there was a guy on campus who said, yeah, Josiah, if you could drop me off in Chicago, that'd be great. I need to catch a flight to go to Pennsylvania. And, and that, that worked out real well, I thought. And uh, he, he was going to ride with me. I, I forgot to ask him which airport he'd be flying out of. I assumed it'd be O'Hare. But it turns out it was Midway. And how many of you have ever driven to Midway Airport before? Okay. I would not recommend that. <laughs> Especially on a Friday evening. It was crazy. I was, I was driving, um, get, off, get off the highway. It wasn't too bad traffic, you know. It was at least a foot in front of you, you know. That's, that's not too bad. And uh, I get off the highway, but I thought the airport would be right there. And instead, it was somewhere like 10 miles away that took over an hour to travel those 10 miles. And there's stop signs every, you know, 200 feet, and people are going 55. And I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I've never driven in traffic like this before. Um, so uh, needless to say, I, I dropped the guy off, and I, I'm getting back on the highway. And there's this one point where I get on the highway. I have half a mile before I have an exit on the left. And I've got to merge over across uh, six lanes of 80-mile-an-hour traffic. It was not <laughs> fun. <laughs> felt, like, felt like my life was flashing before my eyes. In fact, I was turned around looking to see if I could merge one way, and another guy yells, Josiah, look, and there was barrels right there, and I barely swerved out of the way. Uh, just got over in time. Uh, the Lord was keeping us safe. But let me tell you, sometimes life, doesn't it feel like those cars are just flying by, and you just feel like you can't be under control, and you, you don't know where you are? <laughs> I know it's like that for me sometimes, too. And uh, that's kind of the thought that I have when I, when I begin to read this passage. Uh, the Apostle Paul, he lived a pretty hectic life. He, uh, amidst, amidst all the, the missionary travels he did, he was stoned. Uh, he went through shipwreck. Uh, people thought he was dead on multiple occasions, and he wasn't. And uh, just think about that for a minute. That's a, a rather, <laughs> it's not a fun idea. Uh, he had a pretty crazy life. Yet here in, uh, here in 1 Timothy, we can see a little bit of his motivation for why he continued on, why he kept, why he kept moving in ministry. Uh, he, he talks about his motivation, which is godliness. It says, godliness is profitable unto all things. I want you to say that with me now. Can you say, godliness is profitable? Godliness is profitable. Great. Thank you. Um, godliness is always the right way to go. And, and there's two aspects. When you're, whenever you're going to obey God... It involves uh, the right thinking, so that means you have to know what God wants you to do, and then you actually have to do it. There's the application. You have to have the right, you know, I guess you could say theology, and then you have to apply that theology. That's why we have to read the word, but then we have to apply it. Um, in James, it talks about faith is the, um, when you will show your, your faith by your works. That's what he's talking about there. So that's what godliness is, and it's always re rewarding. In the verses that follow, it says, First, that godliness has the promise of the life that now is. Think about it with me. If you're going to live a godly life, and obviously the godly life is going to have the fruits of the Spirit. You're going to have love, joy, 
peace, patience, uh, long-suffering and gentleness, goodness, faith, and meekness, and temperance, those things are going to be evident in your life. And those things are good, right? Nobody's going to tell you, hey, stop loving me. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Stop being patient with me. No. These things, the, the, the part afterwards in the, the verse that talks about the fruits of the Spirit, it says, against such there is no law, because these things are always good to have in your life. It's rewarding in the life that now is, but it also is even more rewarding in the life that is to come. In uh, Philippians 2, there's a verse that's uh, pretty well known. It says, um, it says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Think about that. If you are living your life as a Christian, you are the representative of Christ on earth. And that's the best that you can be when you serve God. You, can, you are at your best when you are serving God with your life. But if the worst thing happens to you here on earth and you end up dying for Christ, you're in an even better place because you're going to be with God in heaven. There's nothing that can stop the Christian when he is obeying God. Either you're serving Christ and you're his representative here on earth for me to live as Christ, but then if you die, it's even better. It's gain. That's just an amazing picture. It's the promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. But not only is godliness rewarding in your life, it's also our motivation for service. Because of what Christ did for us, the songs that we sang for you, they're, they're the picture of, of Christ coming to this earth, dying for us, and then the resurrection, he didn't stay that he is the living God, the Savior of all men, especially to those who believe. Christ died for you. And if you think about that, every day, no matter what you are doing, if you think about Christ's death, you'll have no problem living the Christian life. Uh, usually when we fall into sin, when we, when we turn our backs on God, that's when we are not thinking about him. Um, a man once said, an ungodly day is a day spent without thinking about God. Uh, many times we think, okay, ungodly people are those who aren't saved, those who aren't Christians, those uh, who haven't heard the gospel before. But that's not necessarily um, the only people who are ungodly. Those who have heard the gospel and, and spend an entire day without even thinking about God have, in my mind, it seems like they've committed an even worse sin because they're in a relationship they should, they should be focused on the person who saved them. And instead, they, they, they just ignore him. And I know I do that. And I've fallen into that sin. But, but Christ died for me. And if you reflect upon Christ's death and his resurrection, what he did, and then focus on God throughout that, that entire time, um, it will not be hard. It won't be a hard burden to obey him. In Matthew 11, Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And a yoke is like that, that wooden thing that they used to connect two oxen together. And Jesus is saying, take my yoke. Like he's carrying one part of the load, and he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When you are, when you are with Christ, uh, you draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Uh, then, then it is an easy burden to bear. It's easy to be godly and to live that godly life. And you will have those, the rewards of the life that now is and the reward of that which is to come. It's an exciting moment. Uh, and it's, it's even sweeter just to spend that time with Christ. Uh, in conclusion, I want, I want to tell one more story. Uh, while I was home for break, it was warmer there uh, in Ohio. I don't know why. It was like, it's like 60 degrees for some days. And so I went, I went on a bike ride with my siblings uh, we love to go on bike rides. We went throughout this neighborhood. Uh, and I have a little sister. She's eight years old. And uh, she doesn't quite like keeping up with us most of the time. Um, <laughs> because we like, we like to go a little faster, and she likes to come along, but she, she takes a while. Uh, but we have, we have uh, a bike that has two seats on it. It's really old. We got it at a garage sale somewhere for really cheap, and we fixed it up. And it's got, it's got two seats and two pedals. And, uh, she loves riding on that because she doesn't have to do any work. And she can keep up with the rest of us. And so uh, my brother took her on that bike, and I went out and my other sister and my other brother, and we went, we went cruising around the neighborhood and off on this bike trail behind through some woods, and we came out in this parking lot, and I was there, and my sister was there, and my brother were there, but the, the brother and sister that were on the bike weren't there. And so we waited in this parking lot for a while, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes go by, and we finally see a little speck off in the distance. 
and slowly, very, very slowly, start coming forward, winding their way. As they pull up to the parking lot, I see that they're trying to ride the bike with a flat tire. And they're moving along very slowly. I told them, get off that bike. You're going to be even faster if you just, just walk at home. Uh, there's no point in trying to ride it at that point. There, there's, there's two ways of, of living life, uh, it seems, like here on Earth. Either you're flying by in the middle of... Uh, the middle of Chicago and cars are driving past you and you feel like you can't get anything under control or you feel like you just can't get anywhere and like nothing's going on around you then life is just just poking along and no matter how hard you try to live for God you just you just can't can't get to that next step remember God does not expect you to do this on, in, in your own power he doesn't he doesn't call you to, to live um, the, the perfect Christian life um, without, without giving you the resources uh, to obey him. And sure, we're never going to, we're never going to be perfect. But instead, he, he promises that he will take care of you. Uh, if you would, just quickly flip over to Matthew chapter 6. Um, this is, I will conclude with this verse here. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to look at verses uh, 25 through 33. It says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What ye shall eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. This is the verse I want to emphasize. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. Put God first in front of everything else, and all these things shall be added unto you. You'll have nothing to worry about, because God is on your side. When David faced Goliath, he didn't have to worry. He had God on his side. Rest in that promise tonight. And I hope we've been an encouragement to you. Let's close in prayer. Lord, I thank you for who you are. Uh, and your, your majesty, your power, that you can move mountains. And I thank you that you came to this earth uh, in human form. And uh, you died for us. We can have that relationship with you. I pray that if someone is here who doesn't know you personally as their Savior, that they'd come to know you. They wouldn't wait uh, until later to make that right, Lord. Uh, and I pray as well that uh, Christians here, Lord, would seek after you first. They'd put you before all other things and uh, live godly lives, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Again, we're so grateful that you guys stopped in tonight. I'm um, thankful that your, your tour of sorts was successful. I thought, like, who does that? Who spends that break encouraging other people? You guys do. And we're grateful to be a part of the people you were encouraging. So thanks for being here tonight. I know they have, you guys have product out there. So I, I think we're going to pitch it. I'll pitch it for them. <laughs> if they need gas money, they need to get home. Um, so thanks again, everybody, for being here this evening. Any parting words at all? We're good. All right, thanks again. Have a great night. Good evening.